A detailed guide for patents, trademarks and designs after the Brexit for the no deal scenario, the hard Brexit or the deal scenario. I am Rolf Klesen, patent attorney and partner with Freischem and Partner and I am publishing a new video about trademarks, patents and designs every Thursday on my YouTube channel. And in this video I am explaining what happens to patents, trademarks and designs after the Brexit in case there is a deal between the EU and Great Britain and where there is no deal between the EU and Great Britain. Have you ever wondered whether you have to take any action regarding your patents, trademarks or designs because of the Brexit, because of Great Britain leaving the European Union? Starting from 30th of March 2019, EU trademarks and EU designs will no longer have any effect in Great Britain. As for European patents, little is changing. First I will talk about patents, which is probably the easiest thing. Then I'll talk about trademarks and finally I will deal with the EU designs which is a little bit difficult. First of all it is clear that Great Britain will continue to be part of all the important treaties such as the Paris Convention or the TRIPS Agreement and especially the TRIPS Agreement um, was also signed by Great Britain and the TRIPS Agreement says that the, sign, the nations signatory to this agreement must allow trademark, patent and design protection for a certain period of time. And at the same time it is clear that Great Britain was uh, and is at the moment still part of the EU trademark system and the EU design system. And Great Britain agreed to trademark and design protection based on the EU design, EU trademark in Great Britain for a certain time for the owners of these rights. So if Great Britain is leaving the EU, they cannot take away these rights from the right owners and there must be some way to, for the right owners to still have protection for the trademarks and the designs, the EU designs, the EU trademarks in Great Britain after the Brexit. Otherwise Great Britain would likely be in breach of the TRIPS agreement and I cannot imagine that Great Britain will do that. At the moment there are two alternatives. Either the EU reaches an agreement with Great Britain or there is no agreement. That means a hard Brexit. Both the EU and Great Britain have already warned industrial property right owners um, that their that it is not unlikely that there is a hard Brexit with no deal. The Institute of Government in the UK has made up a really nice infographic uh, showing, that, uh, showing the different scenarios and showing that a no deal scenario might be more likely than a deal scenario. Even if there would be an agreement reached between the negotiating parties of the EU and Great Britain, then still the Parliament would have to agree with this deal and also the, all the EU member states would have to ratify this agreement. So each member state of the EU would have to ratify that agreement or sign the agreement and in the past that uh, the time frame to do so um, for other agreements has been quite long and it is um, in my personal view, quite unlikely that there is still sufficient time uh, to collect all the signatures under the agreement. Let's assume there is an agreement. Then there is a transitional period until the 31st of December 2020 where, the intellect, where Great Britain basically still uh, in, in, in principle still is member of the EU trademark and the EU design system. And for all pending applications that are not registered but applied for at that deadline, there is another deadline 
namely the 30th of September 2021, uh, where right owners can still apply for British uh, trademarks or designs and claim the time rank of the um, original first application in the EU. A draft agreement between the EU and Great Britain has been published on 19th of March 2018 and all the rules regarding the intellectual property rights are governed by the Articles 50 and the following Articles. Starting in August 2018, the Government of Great Britain has published several guidelines um, to prepare um, certain parts of industry for the, a hard Brexit with no deal. However, so far there are no guidelines regarding patents, trademarks or designs. I assume that these guidelines will be published soon. So in the following, I will look at both scenarios. The scenario where there is a hard Brexit, no deal, and the scenario where there is a deal between the EU and Great Britain. First, I'll talk about patents. Great Britain is a member of the European Patent Convention, the EPC. And this is not limited to EU countries. There are other non-EU members such as Switzerland or Turkey or Norway or Iceland. And the UK will just be another non-EU member. Patents that are granted uh, by the European Patent Office will still be able to have effect in the UK and be validated in the UK. There is one aspect regarding patents that is interesting in this respect, the Brexit, the UPC, the Unified Patent Court. Great Britain has ratified the UPC agreement on 26th of April 2018 and the only ratification that is missing for the UPC agreement to be in effect is Germany. The ratification of Germany is currently blocked by basically two complaints with the Constitutional Court in Germany. One complaint regarding the independence of the Boards of Appeal of the European Patent Office and then one um, complaint regarding the UPC agreement. Both of these complaints are scheduled to be decided in 2018. So it is uh, in the case that these decisions are favorable for the UPC system. It will still be possible before the Brexit for Germany to ratify the agreement and for the whole system to be in effect and start working basically the UPC. Supplementary protection certificates for patents that are issued before the Brexit will still be valid in the UK after the Brexit. At least that's the take from the white paper of the UK IPO. And before the Brexit, the UK will also provide um, a way to have a supplementary protection certificate in the UK, so something comparable. And companies, especially the pharmaceutical companies, will be able to apply for these certificates after the Brexit. At least that's the plan. So let's talk about EU trademarks. EU trademarks will cease to have any effect in the UK with the Brexit. However, the UK IPO has confirmed that um, the government is working on a way to ensure that EU trademarks will continue to have to grant trademark protection in the UK after the Brexit. However, note that this is not yet decided by the UK Parliament. However, the Parliamentary Undersecretary of State for exiting the European Union, Robin Walker, has said in a public debate on 19th of July 2018 that there will be an automatic and free conversion of all trademarks and designs EU trademarks, EU designs to British corresponding rights, trademarks and designs. Shortly after the debate, it was clarified that this is only the case for the scenario where there is a deal between the EU and Great Britain. However, um, since Great Britain has to have some form of continued protection because of the TRIPS agreement, 
I expect that there will be a way to convert EU trademarks, EU designs to national British rights. Maybe they will not be free and automatic um, if there is no deal. The conversion of these rights of, for example, EU trademarks to British trademarks must occur before the Brexit. That's because of the uh, EU trademark directive. And it is expected that the UK will provide the necessary tools in good time. In my personal view, it is very unlikely that EU trademark holders will lose trademark protection in the UK after the Brexit. In the unlikely event that EU trademark holders will lose their trademark rights in the UK, of course, um, the trademark holders can apply for British trademarks before the Brexit. Why is it important to apply for the trademark before the Brexit? Well, there might be third parties that are um, basically waiting for the chance to register trademarks of EU trademark holders that are currently not registered in the UK and then basically enforce these trademarks against the original trademark owners or at least extort money from the EU trademark holders. If your business depends on trademark protection in Great Britain and it is of economic significance, then I recommend for the small chance that you lose your trademark rights in the UK to register a British trademark now or um, maybe wait until the end of the year and to be have a more clear picture whether there will be legislation allowing the conversion or not. Um, an alternative to a British trademark, a national British trademark in the UK would be the extension of an existing international registration to the UK. There are a few other things to consider regarding trademarks and Brexit. Starting from the day of Brexit, use of a EU trademark in Great Britain will no longer count toward proof of use um, in proceedings uh, before, for example, the EU IPO. Then an important thing is that English will remain an official language at the EU IPO because um, two other countries have official language English, which are Ireland and Malta. In contrast to the priority, a seniority from an older British national trademark can no longer be claimed within an EU trademark after the Brexit. And one other strategic advice, um, I mentioned a transitional period that might be there to register British trademarks and claiming the time rank of an earlier EU trademark application. Um, if, you don't re if you don't trust that there will be a transitional period or if you think there, the legislation will not be there, and for example, if there is no deal, then starting in November, December, maybe you can start thinking about filing a British national trademark or extending an international registration to Great Britain. An EU trademark might take uh, four or more months to get registered and um, if the trademark is still in application phase and not yet registered at the Brexit date and there will be not a transitional period, maybe you cannot get a registered trademark in the UK. Maybe you cannot get an automatically converted registered trademark in the UK. Let's talk about designs. Designs have the problem that they have to be new at the filing date. In general, all the principles that I explained for the EU trademarks also apply to the EU designs. For example, for the automatic and free conversion or the necessity for the UK to provide some tool to convert an EU design to a British national design. Um, however, this one difference with the novelty introduces some new and additional problems. As I said, it is quite unlikely that uh, EU design owners will lose their design protection in the UK after the Brexit. However, if that would be the case, 
then my recommendation would be that you file a national EU designs or designs according to the Hague Agreement with a designation of Great Britain for all designs where the design has been published within the last 12 months to ensure that you have design protection in the UK after the Brexit, even if there is no automatic or any conversion of EU design rights to national British design rights. And one thing in the white paper of the UK IPO surprised me a little bit. Supposedly, there is also a conversion of unregistered EU designs to unregistered British designs. Maybe one more thing. Great Britain is a member of the Hague Agreement, so if you are considering filing a design at the moment, then maybe consider designating the UK within an Hague Agreement application. Um, for example, if you need protection in Switzerland, the EU and Great Britain and maybe other countries, just also designate Great Britain uh, specifically in addition to the EU, just to be safe that you have design protection after the Brexit. And of course, we are happy to help you with any of your trademark or design or patent needs in Europe or Germany. Let's talk about jurisdiction and courts. EU-wide court decisions, for example, of EU trademark courts, will no longer have any effect in Great Britain after the Brexit. Starting from the Brexit date, UK courts will not be able to base their decisions on EU trademarks or EU designs. So both plaintiffs and defendants should take this into account. Currently it is not clear if there are any transitional rules regarding pending litigation in Great Britain or the EU. So finally I want to give you a brief summary and some recommendations for action. With regard to patents, little is changing, so just continue as you did. Um, you will still be able to validate your granted patents before the European Patent Office in Great Britain. It is not clear yet whether Great Britain will be able to continue to be part of the um, unified patent court system. I already told you that I consider the risk that EU design and EU trademark holders will lose their trademark and design rights in the UK after the Brexit is quite low. However, if you have really important trademarks where your business relies on and you don't want to be in a position to having to refile the trademark after the Brexit, Maybe you want to wait until about November, December to see whether how the legislation process goes in the UK and if you uh, feel that there is a risk that you lose your trademark, maybe you want to file either a national British trademark in the UK or extend an existing international registration to Great Britain. As for designs, um, if you have really important designs um, maybe you want to consider to file the designs that have been published within the last 12 months um, as national British designs or maybe if you are currently considering filing designs anyway, maybe you consider to file a uh, design according to the Hague Agreement and you designate not only the EU but also Great Britain separately. Of course, feel free to send me any questions regarding Brexit and patents, trademarks and designs to my email at rc at freisham.eu, which is also under this video. I hope I was able to explain what happens to patents, trademarks and designs after the Brexit. If you are new to my channel and want to find out more about patents, trademarks and designs every Thursday, please subscribe to my channel. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. I'm answering comments and questions below this video and most importantly protect your intellectual property and go make it count.